Hi Year 9, in this video I'll be working through that very difficult final question from your second trigonometry diagnostic, which reads that a tower is built on flat ground, three tourists A, B and C are observing the tower from ground level, A is due north of the tower, C is due east, and B is on the line of sight from A and C and between them. The angles of elevation to the top of the tower from A, B and C are 26 degrees, 28 degrees, and 30 degrees respectively. What is the bearing of B from the tower? Now here we have a worded problem with a lot of information being provided. So the natural first step is to draw a diagram to reflect all this information. So that's how I'll begin. So I'll start by just drawing up a tower. So let's call this our tower. And I'll say the top of the tower, I'll call point T for tower. The bottom I'll just call point O because that will effectively act as our origin. And we're told that um, A and um, C, those two tourists, are due north and due east of the tower. So to help plot those, I'm just going to overlay a compass. So I'll say this here is um, our compass here in black. So if this I call going due north, then this would be east, this would be south, and this would be west. And we're told that tourist A is somewhere due north of the tower. So I'll call this A. And so the line linking point O to the tourist A is um, some distance we're not actually told. Um, we're told that um, uh, tourist C is due east. Oops, oh, just lost my line there. Let me just redraw that. And now I'll overlay point C, which we're told is due east. And um, that, so we have the, the line going from the tower over to tourist C. And then we finally have tourist B which is on the line of sight between A and C. So if I draw that line, tourist B is somewhere on this line between them. So it doesn't really matter where I draw it. Maybe I'll just go here. So there is tourist B. Now um, I can also connect O to B. And then the next piece of information we have are the various angles of elevation. So we have um, uh, person A looking up to the tower from the ground level. We've also got person B looking up to the tower from, the, from where they are on the ground. And the same with person C. So we're effectively in um, th operating in three dimensions here. This is a 3D trigonometry problem. And we're told each of these angles. So the angle of person A looking up is 26 degrees. The angle of person B looking up is 28 degrees. And then the angle of person C looking up is 30 degrees. Those are all the angles of elevation. Now, we're being asked the, the ultimate question, what we're ultimately trying to find is the bearing of B from the tower. So if I start at the tower, point O, which is the base of the tower, and then I think about the angle going from north over to point B, which is this angle here. That is the bearing that we want to find because true bearings are always measured from north and we're not actually told whether this is a, a true bearing or not. So we can assume it must be a true bearing since we're not told otherwise. So that is the angle we ultimately need to find. Now, as you can see, there's a lot going on in this diagram. So I think what will be helpful is to take all of these triangles that are connected together in three dimensions and to draw each of them as two dimensional triangles so that it will be easier to unpack where the relevant information is. So I'll start by drawing up um, this triangle at the base, this triangle OAC because this ultimately is the triangle that contains the angle that we're after. So I'll just um, scroll down. And um, the first thing to point out with this triangle um, is that it's a right angled triangle 
because going up from O to A is going north and going across from O to C is going east and since north and east are perpendicular to each other what that means is if this is um, triangle O A C then this must be a right angle um, uh, now I'll, I'll overlay B here too so here's point B and if I connect that, we effectively get another triangle, triangle OAB. And I think that's helpful to overlay because ultimately um, this is the angle that represents the bearing. That's the angle we're looking for. And uh, I might just call that angle theta just to make it easier to refer to. And in that triangle OAB, I'll call the angle at point A angle alpha. And I'll call the angle of point B angle beta, just in keeping with the convention of using Greek letters for unknown angles. And so ultimately, um, if we can find alpha and beta, we'll then be able to find theta. That, that's ultimately what we're going to look for. But before we dive into that, I'm going to draw the other triangles because each of the sides of these triangles are connected to the top of the tower using the angles of elevation. So I'll draw each of those triangles because they will also be very helpful for us. So um, we'll have the, um, the um, if I call this O for the base of the tower and T for the top of the tower, then we have the triangle formed um, from person A who's looking to the top of that tower now obviously the tower is going directly up, so that means this is a right angle going over to person A, because person A is standing on the ground. And um, we're told that that angle of elevation, the angle from A up to T, was 26 degrees. So that's going to be a useful triangle. Um, the next triangle is basically the same triangle but from person B. So let's draw that one up. Now, none of the, I should point out none of these triangles are to scale. That's not really the important part. Um, uh, what's really important is that the information is overlaid correctly. So here we have um, the um, base of the tower, the top of the tower, and then person B. So that will also be a right angle because person B is standing on the ground. And we're told that that angle of elevation was 28 degrees. Okay, finally, we'll draw the equivalent triangle from person C. So, let's just uh, draw that one up and overlay the information. And then we'll have everything we need to get cracking on finding this bearing, this angle alpha. So here we'll have O, T, and person C, and another um, right angle triangle. And the angle of elevation there was 30 degrees. Okay, now as I mentioned, um, the way we can get started here is to note that theta plus alpha plus beta, the sum of those angles will be 180 degrees simply because of the angle sum of a triangle. So we can say alpha plus beta plus theta will be 180 degrees and that's thanks to the angle sum of a triangle always being 180 degrees. So given we care about theta, we can say that theta is equal to 180 degrees minus alpha minus beta. So if we can find alpha and find beta, then we have everything we need to get this bearing. Now to get started with um, finding alpha and beta, I think we can begin by thinking about alpha and using, oops, um, using this right angled triangle here OAC. So this triangle here is a right angled triangle and so we can use um, uh, the trigonometric ratios to get an expression for um, the tan of alpha. We can say the tan of alpha will be the opposite over the adjacent. So let me just note that. Let me just say um, in triangle OAC the tangent of alpha will be the opposite over the adjacent, which is OC over OA. So we can say the tan of alpha is OC over OA. 
So if we can get uh, a value for OC and a value for OA, we can divide one by the other, take the inverse tangent, and then we'll have alpha, which will be step one to getting theta. So to find OC and OA, I think it will be helpful to use our other triangles because in those triangles we have OA and we have OC. And given they're right angled triangles, we can also use the trigonometric ratio. So let's begin here. We can say that the, um, the tan of 26 is equal to opposite OT over adjacent OA. And so if I use the rules of equations, I can rearrange this to say OA is equal to OT over tan 26. Hopefully you see what I've done there. I've essentially multiplied both sides by OA and then divided both sides by tan 26 to make OA the subject. So there I have OA. I can do a similar thing in um, this bottom triangle. I can say that the tan, oops, the um, tan of 30 is equal to the opposite OT over the adjacent OC. And again, I can rearrange to make OC the subject. OC will be OT over tan 30. So now that I have those two expressions, I can substitute those in. So if I have the tan of alpha equals OC over OA, I know that OC is OT over um, tan 30. And we're taking that ratio and, and dividing it by OA, which was OT over tan 26. So OT over tan 26. And when dividing one fraction by another, we keep the first fraction, OT over tan 30. We then flip the second fraction, so that becomes tan 26 over OT. And we um, change the operation to be multiplying. So here the OT and in the numerator and denominator will cancel out and we end up with the tan of alpha being equal to tan 26 over tan 30. So even though we didn't know the length of OT, it didn't matter because it cancelled out. And now we can therefore say that alpha, the angle we care about, is the inverse tan of tan 26 over tan 30. And these are all things we can put into our calculator to get a value for alpha. So let's do that now. So we want the inverse tan of the ratio of tan 26 divided by tan 30. So when we press equals, we get um, 40.19 degrees, or if I want that in degrees, minutes, seconds, it's 40 degrees, 11 minutes, 25, 26 seconds. Um, now, given all the angles in this question were noted just to the nearest degree, I'm just going to write here that alpha is 40 degrees to the nearest degree, just to, um, you know, keep it simple in terms of how I write my working out. But what I'll do, so I don't lose any accuracy, I'm going to store this result so that if I need to refer to it later, I can. So I've stored it in um, letter A here. So if I need to recall that exact answer, I can just do recall A. So that's going to come in handy later. Um, so there we have alpha. Now all we need to do is find beta and we've got everything we need to find our bearing or angle theta. Now in terms of beta, that's sitting in the triangle um, OAB, this triangle here, which is not a right angle triangle. So we can't use our trig ratios, but we can use the sine rule because we have angle alpha, which we've just worked out angle beta, which we're trying to work out. <coughs> and so if we can get expressions for OB and OA, we have two sides and two angles, so the sine rule becomes relevant. So what I'll say is um, in triangle OAB, we can say that the sine of beta 
divided by the opposite side. So the side opposite to B, beta in that triangle is OA. So the sine of beta over side OA will be equal to the sine of alpha over the side opposite to alpha. And in that triangle, the side opposite to alpha is OB. So sine of beta over OA is equal to the sine of alpha over OB. That's using the sine rule. Now we want beta, so the sine of beta will be equal to OA times the sine of alpha over OB. And I'll just rewrite this in a way that will make things um, cancel quite neatly. So we'll say that's the sine of alpha, which we've, we've already worked out, times OA over OB. And in terms of OA, we already worked out that expression. OA was equal to OT over 1026. But for OB, we can use this second triangle here and do the same technique. We can say that the, um, tan, oh, the tan of 28 is equal to the opposite, OT, over the adjacent, OB. And then rearranging, I can get OB equals OT over tan 28. And so now I can substitute OA and OB into um, the equation we're dealing with. So OA is OT over tan 26. So this will become sine alpha times OT over tan 26. And that's being divided by um, and OB we have worked out is OT over tan 28. So OT over tan 28. And just like before, um, we can deal with the one fraction being divided by another. So we'll keep the first fraction. We will flip the second fraction. And then we will change the operation to times. And just like before, even though we don't know the length of OT, it doesn't matter because they cancel out. And so we have the sine of beta equals the sine of alpha times tan 28 over tan 26. And again, because we want beta, um, we can say beta is equal to the inverse sine of all of that. So the inverse sine of sine alpha times tan 28 over tan 26. And at this point, we can put this into our calculator to get our value for beta. So <clears throat> here we want the inverse sine of the sine of alpha, which I've stored in my calculator as um, A, times the ratio of tan 28 divided by tan 26. And so all of that is in the inverse sign. And so we have 44.7 degrees. Or if I'm just going to write that um, to the nearest degree, that would round up to 45 degrees. And that's again to the nearest degree. But we need to keep in mind whenever we use the sine rule, we need to know that there is that ambiguous case. So it is possible that um, beta is also um, obtuse. And if that's the case, the um, angle beta would actually be 180 degrees minus that answer. So in this case, it would be 135 degrees. So beta could be 45 degrees or 135 degrees. And we need to keep both of those possibilities in mind and hope that it becomes clear which of those um, must be true based on all the other information that's um, going on. So we need to keep in mind that ambiguous case when we're using the sine rule. So what we can do now is we can bring everything together and say, um, um, therefore, theta is equal to 180 degrees minus alpha, which we've got as 40 degrees, if we're doing to the nearest degree. Uh, uh, I won't worry about my degree symbols yet. Um, 40 
minus 45, that's one possibility, or theta could be 180 minus 40 for alpha minus 135. Either of those are possible. So theta could be um, 180 minus 40 minus 45. So theta could be 95 degrees, or it could be 180 minus 40 minus 135. It could also be 5 degrees. There are two possibilities. But if we come back to our original triangle um, where, where we've put theta in, notice that theta, when it's sitting inside triangle OAC, theta must be less than that right angle. Um, and if that's the case, theta can't be 95 degrees because theta has to be less than 90. So what that means is this is the correct or applicable value for theta um, given all the other information in this question. So what we can do is we can conclude therefore um, the bearing of B from the tower is, and I'll write this in true bearing format, which needs three digits, zero, zero, five degrees. Panic, boom. And that's how you answer that question. So hopefully you've been able to follow along with all of these steps. There's a lot of working going on. But as I mentioned in class, the real um, challenge or the, the thing that is the hardest part really to get started on this question and questions like this is drawing up the diagram. So really what you need is a lot, as much practice as you can get in taking worded problems and converting them into a diagram. And then my advice would always be if you do find yourself in a 3D trigonometry situation, it can be helpful to take all of those triangles that are existing in the three dimensions and just draw each of them in two dimensions so that you can then piece all of the um, components together in a way that's hopefully manageable. Because hopefully you can see once you've got all those diagrams, um, um, the, the working out, whilst there's a lot of it, it does fall out quite neatly. Um, I think the hardest thing might be to know where to start, but I think having all these triangles drawn out really helps give you um, something to work with. So again, hopefully you've been able to follow along and that this helps give you a bit of confidence to tackle these kinds of questions if you did come up, um, come up against them again in another exam. All right, tick boom.